Um, all right, good morning, great teams. Um, it's nice to see you guys again. Um, I think yesterday was quite a nice lesson. We ended off with a bit of a fun, a fun session. Um, and I hope that you guys learned something because by the sounds of your, your exp explaining skills, um, it seems like you guys had the general idea. So I think before we start, let's maybe have a quick, quick recap with regards to epithelial tissue. Um, epidermal, where would you find epidermal tissue? On the outside. Skin as well as? Lining. Yes, there we go. There's a, well, there's a few, all right. Um, and then we'll go into squamous. That's the flat tissue. The flat tissue, and where, one example of where you would find it. Um, so one layer, where would you find one layer of tissue? Okay, the stratified, yeah, yes. So a single layer is also known as? Simple. Simple. And many layers known as? Stratified. Okay, perfect. Cuboidal? Cube-shaped. Cube-shaped, and one example of where you would find it? Kidneys. Great. Uh, columnar? Column-shaped. All right, and what? is normally on the top of it. Cilia. Okay. Just to clarify, yesterday when we spoke about the line, we spoke about cilia. They are quite different. Yes. Ma'am, uh, last, not last week, yesterday we talked about the smoky thing and how it paralyzes the cilia. How do you fix it? All right, so it will temporarily paralyze it or it will then kill it. And once it's killed, it's, I mean, remember that those cells rejuvenate themselves? Every four days you'll actually get, remember it's multiple layers. So as that comes off, you will get new ones. Um, but with smokers, that, because they're smoking consistently, it will keep on happening. All right. But it does rejuvenate as well. All right. So the difference is there is that the microvilli and the villi specifically are that shape to increase um, surface area for absorption. Villi aren't responsible to absorb. Their main function is movement. Okay, so although they look similar and they move, the main function is to shift it across. Okay. Um, and then also, we learned that within those columnar cells, we can also have? Mucus. All right? Produced by? Goblet cells. Goblet cells, yes. It doesn't necessarily only have to be goblet cells. There could be other, what else could be in the, in the cells? Yeah. Glands, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, that's glandular sec uh, secretory, but that still falls within columnar. Okay, is everyone clear on AIDS today? Great. All right, so today we're starting connective tissue. I know that some of those questions we had at the end, you guys could explain quite nicely elements of connective tissue, so I think you've been slightly introduced to it. But connective tissue is essentially everything that well, makes up the bulk of us. All right, so other than our nerves um, and our, and, well, no, nerves are part of connective tissue, but other than the other tissues that you've learned about, which we'll go into just now, um, it would be the nerves, it would be, let's, let me just show you here, there. So here's connective tissue. Other than nerve and muscles and the epithelial, connective tissue basically makes up everything else of you. Okay. All right, so it holds other organs or tissues together. In this specific case, it has few cells in a large matrix. Now, can anyone take a guess as to what a matrix would be? Like a fluid substance? Yeah, it could be fluid. Um, and as we go through it, you'll see that it could change between the different, so for example, in bone, it wouldn't necessarily be fluid, but it would be kind of a mass substance that it would then hold the cells in. Whereas with plants, you are more familiar with the cells creating the tissue. With connective tissue, you actually, the, extra, the extracellular matrix is part of the tissue. Okay, which we'll go into now as well. And it's widely distributed in the body. The functions for connective tissue, support, packaging, defense, and repair. Right. And then examples here would be fibrous, bone, cartilage, blood, but we will go into that. I'm gonna show you a quick video. In science, in this video, I'd like to talk about connective tissue. Connective tissue is one of the four types of tissues found in our body. 
Connective tissue helps provide structure, support, defense, transport materials, and binds things together. Connective tissue is unique in that it consists of cell fibers. These fibers include collagen fibers, which are tough fibers, and elastic fibers. In addition, the cells are separated by a ground substance, which is made up of water, fluid, and a mix of proteins called matrix. There are several different types of connective tissues, and they're found throughout the body. First up are loose connective tissue. It is composed of collagen and elastic fibers. It is found in and around blood vessels and organs. Next, you have fibrous connective tissue. They have a large amount of collagen and few cells. They are found in tendons and ligaments. Cartilage is a connective tissue. It is found at the end of bones, in and around nose and ears. Adipose connective tissue is body fat, and it is used for insulation and to help store energy. Blood is considered a special type of connective tissue, and the cells are separated by fluid. And bones are also considered a type of connective tissues. So as you can tell, connective tissues are important. They help attach bone to bone, muscle to bone, move materials around in the form of blood, give us structures in bones, and also help us store some fat. Thanks for watching, and Moo Moo Math uploads a new map. So it really, if you think about it in your body, it really makes up most of what we are. Okay. We've already touched on this, so you'll see that we'll talk about bone separately, but essentially we'll be doing areola, then we'll do tendons and ligaments within the fibrous category. They spoke about loose, loose connective tissue, that's the areola, which we'll chat about. Adipose. Um, and then cartilage will fall, its, uh, fall into its own category, bone will fall into its own category, and then blood will form its own category, and we'll just touch on them. Okay. All right, so this is just a broad outline in terms of what these tissues look like, and once we go into the details, you'll understand, based on its structure, what its function is. Okay, so you can assume, for example, that blood would obviously have cells spread apart a lot more within the extracellular matrix because it's a fluid. Whereas if you look at bone, it's obviously a lot more dense, okay, because it's a harder substance. Um, yeah, and then as we go through it, you'll understand it a little bit better. But loose connective tissue, you'll see that it, it seems to be kind of floating around. Um, adipose tissue, nice and close together, blood we've discussed, and then fibrous connective tissue, you'll see a dense substance as well but obviously not as dense as bone, and we'll chat about that as well. And then cartilage a little bit between the two. Okay. Right, just in terms of where we would actually find these in our body, looking at just the arm, but it could be in a variety of places. Um, so let's start off with loose connective tissue. This would be under our skin, okay? That is basically holding down the epithelial tissue, okay? Um, B, where is B at? Fibrous connective tissue, that's for example your tendons and your ligaments. C, adipose tissue, so that's basically the fat layer under your arm. D, cartilage, we know cartilage is between our joints and at the end of our bones in this specific scenario. Bone we're all familiar with and blood we're all familiar with. Okay, so you can see an example of each of those just within one little picture. Any questions so far? Good. All right, so areola connective tissue is the first one we'll be looking at. It's a loose, filmy tissue with various cells and fibers scattered in the matrix. So if you actually look at your first row in your diagram picture chart, 
you'll see that it has a very similar picture to this. Right, so to actually show it in real life, here we go. This is basically the, the tissue. So you can see it's almost like a thin film. So for example, when you have a steak in front of you, a raw piece of steak, or even once it's cooked and you try and pull, um, you know, sometimes it has a, a fold in it, for example, between the two muscles or anything like that, and you pull it apart, and it's got that thin, almost like a sinew between it, looks like this, that's going to be the areola tissue. Okay. So, it surrounds the muscles, blood vessels, holds the intestines, nerves, and all other organs together. Right? In terms of how it looks in the structure, you have this picture there, and we're going to have to add the labels. So, as I go through it, if you guys don't mind just adding it in. Yeah. Alright, so the extracellular matrix, and you will see it here. The extracellular matrix is called the ground substance, it's a synonym for it. It basically is the fluid or the mass part of the connect connective tissue. So it's where the cells would actually be placed in it. Alright. But you'll understand as we go along where it actually fits and then you'll, you'll understand. So the cells and all of that are the active parts, whereas the extra, extracellular matrix, it still has a function. For example, in blood it would be the plasma. It makes up the bulk of, bulk of the connective tissue and it holds the cells and all of that in it. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Alright, so in terms of this picture, they do mention the cells. In tissues, this would be called a fibroblast it secretes fibers, okay? And when we're talking about connective tissue, the two, the two fibers that we're really looking at are elastic and collagen. So collagen fibers, and you explained this quite nicely yesterday, collagen fibers, I mean a lot of people, it's a new trend now to actually drink your collagen. Collagen was always in our face creams and the likes. Um, and now you're actually able to take collagen in through your drinks and bars and all of that. There's a whole new market for it. But essentially, it's supposed to provide the firmness or the strength in a tissue. So a lot of people, in terms of face creams and that, it's to help provide more strength within the tissue, which helps reduce wrinkles and all of that. Okay, does that make sense? So the collagen is the strengthening portion, whereas the elastic fiber is what makes it stretch. Okay, that makes sense. So the fibroblasts will secrete both elastic and collagen, depending on what tissue it is. So whether it be a cartilage versus an areola, will be dependent on how much collagen versus how much elastic. That makes sense, okay? So this one, because it's loose and filmy, which one do you think they would have more of? Elastic or collagen? Elastic. Okay, great. So in this case, you'll see here that these little balls, balls, just in the picture, these are the fibroblasts. So those are the cells that are going to make the fibers. All right? Then this thick, thick fiber here is the white collagen fiber. All right? So that's going to make it stronger and it's, it's stained, so that's why you don't see the white, but that's the white collagen fiber, the thick, thick one that come across. Okay, you guys will have that. And then these thin ones are the thin yellow, they're normally yellow, thin yellow elastic fibers. And everything else that these fibers and the fibroblasts are in, so the rest of the picture underneath all these thread-like fibers is the extracellular matrix. Okay, so you should have those four labels on there. White collagen fiber, yellow elastic fiber, fibroblasts, and the extracellular matrix. Mom, is this this diagram? Yes, the tiny little diagram there. So which one would be the, the thick one? The... All right, so it would be the one that's coming down, the few that are coming down oh, there. Okay. Can you see that? So it's the thick, the thick fibers that are running from top to bottom. Okay. Mom. Yes. Can you just explain collagen again, please? Alright. So collagen is a fiber. So if you think about a blanket, for example. Okay, so let's say 
you've got a, a nice soft blanket, and that's, let's say, the extracellular matrix. In order to make this blanket firm or into a carpet, for example, we would add in thick fibers of, let's say, bamboo or whatever, okay? You're going to add it in there, and that's going to make the carpet or the blanket a lot firmer. That's essentially collagen. If we wanted to maybe stretch the blanket, we would put in maybe a, a long elastic bands or the likes, and then it would be able to stretch. So collagen helps to support and structure it. So in this case, you wouldn't have as much collagen because you want the tissue to be soft and more fluid. When it comes to cartilage, for example, you want more collagen because it needs to be sturdier and harder. Okay, so it just helps add structure and hardness and strength to the actual product or the tissue. Okay. Sorry, ma'am, can you yes. go over the labels one more time? Yes, sure. Thank okay, you. so white collagen fiber. The thin ones are the yellow elastic fibers. The little cells here are the fibroblasts. And the rest of it, so you can just put a line straight through into there perhaps, or in yours, into an open white space, that would be your extracellular matrix. Does everyone have that? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Okay, great. Can I move on? We're still in this. All right, guys, so this is a really interesting condition, just so that you can understand where, where it's fitting in. So I mentioned that this, this tissue actually helps hold, it actually says yeah, attaches epidermal tissue to the underlying tissues. So for example, when you're pulling this up, you're essentially pulling up the areola tissue underneath it. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this syndrome, it's also known as Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, is a term used for a group of rare connected tissue disorders characterized by abnormalities in collagen. So in this case, we would imagine because they're able to perhaps stretch it a little bit more, maybe there isn't enough collagen, all right? The typical signs of EDS include hypermobile joints and skin, which means hyper is over the top or extra, above, above normal. Um, mobile obviously means movement and then the joints and skin. So this means that they're able to move in ways that they wouldn't normally be able to move those tissues, okay? This condition may often lead to life-threatening impediments in severe cases. I'll show you a video now as well. But I mean, none of us can do that. <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Hyperelastic or fragile skin, joint hypermobility and dislocation, generalized ligamentous laxity. So lax means relaxed. Um, poor wound healing, early onset of arthritis, and that makes sense, right? Because it's mm -hmm. got to do with your joints, and maybe they're moving them in ways that they shouldn't. Additional features, soft tissue and bone fragility, so it's fragile. Soft tissue calcification, so hardening of tissues that are meant to be soft. Mitral valve prolapse, aortic root dilatation, so that's got to do, obviously, with the heart. Developmental dysplasia of the hip, right? So movement of the hip. Club foot. Um, scoliosis. So what's, what's the foot on? It's where the foot actually clubs up like that. Mm -hmm. So it's normally like that. It would club up like that. Scoliosis is generally within the spine. Um, a high palate, so palate in your mouth, um, and gastroparesis. So gastroparesis actually is a slow or delayed emptying of the stomach. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's obviously got to do with the tissue as well, which is can be quite uncomfortable. Imagine. Yeah, so this takes us to. I'm not going to play the whole video. It's a little lengthy. Yes. What's the guy All right, so that you'll also see is bruising. So you'll find that a lot of them, although they can move, move all these funny various ways, it will result in, in the bruising as well. Okay. So but I actually really think in that picture he's actually moved his his patella, his kneecap to the side. Okay, let's look here. So this guy is 
he has a Guinness World Record for the stretchiest skin in the world. 40 years. That's great. Now you're going to meet a record breaker who's truly unbelievable. Before the break, I'll ask you which one of these three guys could do unreal things with his skin. So, which one of you guys is he? to see some more. Can, can you show us what you can do? Yep. Oh, oh, really? yeah. Okay, check this out. Oh, no, no. oh my, turn around guy, let me see you guys as well. Just... So you get the gist of it, hey? Yeah. Yes. Ma'am, so this is completely different because I saw this other video. This guy was very overweight and then he exercised for like a long time and then he eventually got like really skinny, but then he still had like excess skin. So that's completely different. Completely this. different. Okay. So this is, a, this is a disorder within the actual connective tissue. In that case, the skin, the skin has actually just been stretched yeah. way too far. And remember that a lot of the time these people have gained weight over oh, their whole yeah. lives. Yeah. So what happens is their skin, they actually grow accordingly. Mm -hmm. And then they lose all this weight and they land up with it. And often what they have to do is they have to have the skin regraft. So they would cut it off and staple it and all of that to try and get rid of it. Because it isn't, it isn't a disorder. Mm -hmm. It's just because they've grown excessive skin because they have to carry, it has to support its body weight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So everyone understand this though? Yes. So not normal, a disorder, specific to connective tissues, but it would relate more so to the, to the areola tissue in those specific cases where he's actually pulling it by the epidermal tissue. All right, does everyone understand areola tissue? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, then we're gonna look at the white fibrous connective tissue. And these are broken down into tendons and ligaments. So tendons connect muscles to bones and ligaments connect bones to bones. All right, so I know you guys spoke about this yesterday as well. So just remember that these two, but essentially it's a, it's a very similar, similar substance between the two. It's just about what they're connecting, okay? So the cells secrete collagen fibers, and we know this, so this would have more collagen than elastic, okay? But it would still have some elastic, but it would have more, more collagen. An example, the Achilles tendon, the back of your ankle, that would be a, um, a tendon there. And then a ligament, for example, within your knee. Okay, just the difference between, between ligaments and, and tendons. You'll see here that they still have fibroblasts because they're still secreting fibers. It's just a matter of how much collagen versus elastic. Okay, and you'll see it's a much, a much smoother um, connective tissue. 
Okay. Tendons, more, more fibers than cells in this tissue, and I think that's, that's important. So in the previous one, it's more spread out, whereas this one, they'll actually have a lot more fibers that have been produced by the actual number of cells. Okay. And what would their main function be? If they're connecting muscle to bone and bone to bone, what would the main function be? Movement. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there we go. I can see some injuries there as well. I don't know if you ever watched Troy. Yes. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Okay, um, you know these people that walk on their tippy toes, do that have to do with the tendon the Achilles tendon? Hmm? It could be. Because like they can't put their foot like, oh, Yeah, so I've also heard a lot of um, the dangers of wearing high heels for so long or so many years is that they actually say that it could actually shorten your Achilles tendon oh, a little bit because you are on your tippy toes the whole time. It's not extending. Um, but I mean, these are severe cases, right? But that could absolutely be an example. Troy, I don't know if you remember watching it at the end of it, they actually... It um, damaged his Achilles tendon, and that's essentially what brought him down. No one watched it. You guys need to watch Troy. It's got Brad Pitt in it. <laughs> Tendons of the hand, for some examples. I've watched that. No, you haven't. Yes. I have watched it. I watched it with Kyra. I just, I can't remember what it's about, but I do remember it had Brad Pitt in it. Yeah, it's, a, it's quite an oldish movie. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. So. Pretty simple, fibrous. A little bit more collagen, it's a much smoother tissue, it's still got the fibroblast, it will still have some element of elastic, elastic fibers in there and it makes up your ligaments and your tendons. Helps with movement. Okay. Then we've got cartilage, we've got three types, which I'll go into. What do you think, cartilage, in terms of collagen versus elastic, what would it have more of? Collagen. Okay, there we go. You'll also see that they actually, so they do produce fibers and they will have collagen in there. So they secrete the matrix with collagen fibers, elastic fibers, protein, water, etc. You guys can agree that there will be elastic fibers in there because you can still bend collagen. So those little parts at the top of a drumstick, for example, of chicken, that cartilage, you can still bend it, mm -hmm. okay? But it is harder than a ligament or a tendon, okay? In terms of cartilage, they actually have their own cells as well and these are called chondrocytes and they secrete cartilage okay so they'll have collagen and all of that but they'll also secrete actual cartilage so cartilage is made up of all of these but cartilage cells are called chondrocytes does that make sense okay if you and how many of oh, not how many but if have any of you pierced an ear other than the lobe. Yeah. All right, and how long did it take to heal? It's for healing. Yeah, and how long ago did you do it? Uh, during the holidays, so what? Long okay, time. you? About five weeks ago. Okay, all right. So I've got this one, and I got this one years ago, and it probably easily took more than a year for me to stop feeling it completely. And that, that speaks to the fact that it's going to heal really slowly. Now, what is something need to heal have a blood supply right because you mm -hmm. need all your healing properties and all of that to be transported through the blood to the actual area so that healing can happen which means that if cartilage takes long to heal it doesn't have a good blood supply okay so it doesn't have any nerves or blood vessels which means it takes long to heal so just think of a practical example this means that it relies on diffusion from all cells around it to, to heal and maintain, okay? So it does take long. It doesn't mean it can't heal. It just means that it will take longer because they need to get it from elsewhere as opposed to having a direct source. Uh, so yes. would it hurt if you pierced your ear here? Yeah. <laughs> it does still hurt. Okay. <laughs> it does still hurt. So yeah, I understand in terms of, in terms of the nerves. But remember that there's a lot oh, of okay, yeah, other yeah. things in there as well. But um, in terms of healing, yeah, that would be difficult. Okay. Now, I'm going to say cartilage is just like a little part here. Just like your little whole, whole ear is cartilage. Except for the lobe. Except for the lobe. The, the lobe. lobe doesn't have. What is the lobe made out of? 
It's just fat and skin, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And there will be a blood supply there as well, because that bleeds. Yes. Um, I know that, like, if you, I don't know if this is true, but some people say when you get, like, a class in education, you must use the needle and not a gun because it can shatter. If it shatters, can it, like, get back together? I mean, I'm just. Mm. So cartilage can, I mean, it's, it's producing, it's produ those chondrocytes are producing the elastic and the collagen fibers and all of that, but there is going to come a point, and remember, ears, for example, ears and nose, they carry on growing, so it will regenerate, but it will take a lot longer, okay, How but it, it would be it painful, grow? sorry? How does it shatter your So generally with a needle, it will be able to be a slow process, so even if, Oh, for example, good. for example, if you have a window, a window sill, um, or let's say a window on your on your car, for example, if they had to take a really hot needle and they had to do it the right way, they could probably make and drill it slowly. Mm -hmm. They could make a hole in the window. All right. If they come up and they hit it with a sharp point, and they hit the window, it will shatter. Think of think of your your window. Okay. So there is a way of making a hole in the glass with us, and that's what a needle will do. A needle, generally they say they just put it in slowly and it will be able to obviously not damage it. Whereas if it goes in, a gun is literally basically a rock to a window. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, yes. This is more, I think that's more than the next question. But there's girls to use to take the, uh, to like move it to like all the way to the outside of the throat. Yeah. So that would, if the trachea stays like that, that would still be cartilage, but it's the ligaments within the neck that she's able to stretch. Okay, yes. Um, this is a little bit off topic, but if you get one here, does it really stop migraines? Hmm? I've, heard, I've that. heard that. I have heard that. Here, like yeah. And it stops migraines. Yeah, apparently a few people do it. It's worked for some people, but to be honest, I don't know too much science behind really it. Like I don't know too much science. Yeah. I'd have, probably have to have a look. Yeah, it's, a lot of people actually do it for that reason. Some say it work, works, I'm actually not sure. Alright guys, in terms of the cartilage, there are three types of cartilage. You don't have to know all this detail, but there are three types of cartilage. It's hyaline, elastic and fibro cartilages. You won't have to know all, all three, but it's worthwhile just for your own sake. You can actually see blue. Here you would see your thyroid cartilage, your larynx, all of that. Elastic cartilage, your epiglottis, which closes up basically your air pipe, uh, or your windpipe. Um, and then your fibro cartilages, you'll actually see in the pubic area, um, as well as between your discs, your vertebra. Okay. Cartilage in the nose, um, as well as the ears, that would generally be hyaline. Oh no, sorry. Nose is hyaline, ears is a little bit more flexible. That's going to be your elastic. Okay. And then you'll see here, C-shaped rings hold the trachea open, as well as into the lungs, the bronchi and the bronchioles. Okay, so they keep the, keep the, the um, it open. All right, and then articular cartilage, that's between the joints and your fingers, and that would also be hyaline. Okay. Ma'am, what is hyaline? Hyaline is the thickest type of cartilage, and that will be generally between your joints, so um, in your knee, between your, your long bones, for example, that's hyaline. So, for example, even on your, your drumstick, that cartilage on the end of the drumstick, in our body, that would be hyaline. Okay, so it's a thicker, harder, it, it generally provides more support, and that's why it would be, um, for example, in your in your bronchi and bronchioles because it needs to stay open. Whereas in other areas, you could have a little bit more flexibility. Okay, so it helps with function as well. Yes. Now, I've heard if you click your fingers, your fingers get bigger. Is that true? I have heard that. I've heard that it's a myth, but I'd imagine that if you're doing it continuously and it's creating openings for the cartilage to maybe fill up in terms of regenerating, it could, but it probably would be minimal. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's, I once looked at it a long time ago and it seems to not be super substantiated. Yes. You can have me, yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your nose 
in general has a lot of blood vessels within, around the cartilage. Remember that cartilage, although it doesn't have its own blood supply to it, it's still surrounded by cells which will have a blood supply and that's how it heals because it diffuses from the blood into the cartilage. Okay, so you'll still hit it. Remember that saying you're not only hitting the cartilage. If someone only had hit you on the tip of the nose, it probably wouldn't bleed, but the fact that it's hitting the rest of your sinus area and all of that, it would. Okay, and even nose bleeds if you think about it because that's yeah. not the cartilage, it's, it's in your olfactory region up here. Okay. All right, guys, any questions with regards to those three? All right. Can we do a quick quiz? Whatever you, you can do it now, we've got, I think, one or two minutes. Finish it when you can. Can you please do it at home? It honestly shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes. Okay. So if you can just scan this with your phone. It is, but we're updating it as we go along, so we'll update the latest version as we okay. go along. Okay. You have updated? So is it possible for me to do it? Not yet. Oh, okay. Okay. So then I can just use Google Classroom to get the... Just take a picture of the TV. Does that work? How do you scan it? How do you scan it? So what you do is open up your camera. Open your camera. You can even zoom in. And then it should come up, it's that opensurveymonkey.com link. Yeah, I see. And then just keep it That's it. We'll just chat about it next lesson, but it's super quick. Alright, thanks guys. Guys, what's after break? That's fine.